This is an English podcast for English learners. Today, we're talking about the 10 smallest countries in the world. Last week, we discussed the 10 largest countries. And today, we'll discuss the 10 smallest countries. English on the Road is an English podcast for practicing English listening. The themes are geography, nature, and travel, which are some of my biggest interests. When I was in school, I really liked geography class. Learning about maps and where countries are, mountains and lakes and rivers. You can always find some cool facts about geography. Sometimes when I'm bored, I simply Google interesting geography facts. And you can always learn something, something interesting about the earth which we live on. I also love nature. I grew up around a lot of forests and animals. So that's just a part of my life. But today we're talking about the 10 smallest countries in the world. And I'll start at number one. So this is the smallest country. Some people don't think of it as a country because its name is Vatican City. And with an area of just 0.4 square kilometers, Vatican City is the smallest country in the world. But what is this country? Well, it is also the spiritual capital of the Catholic Church and home to the Pope. So it is a significant tourist destination for many people, it may even be a, a spiritual pilgrimage of, of sorts. So Vatican City. And apparently this is the only country in the world that is surrounded entirely by a single city. And what does that mean? That means the Vatican City is entirely surrounded by Rome. So Vatican is in the middle of Rome. And of course, they have some of the world's most famous art collections, beautiful churches and beautiful artwork. They get millions of tourists per year. It's estimated over 5 million people visit this country each year. And amazingly, the, the population of Vatican City is only around 800 people. So they only have like 800 residents who actually live there. Now, I don't know if these are just like popes or cardinals, people connected to the church. I'm not really sure who actually lives there. But that's the world's smallest country, Vatican City. The second smallest country in the world is Monaco. That's M-O-N-A-C-O, -O, Monaco. So Monaco is located on the French Riviera. It covers an area of just two square kilometers. So it is um, about four times bigger than Vatican City, but it's still pretty small, Monaco. It's known for vacations, luxurious lifestyles. It's also home to the uh, famous sporting event called Formula One Grand Prix. 
They also have casinos. I think there's one called the Monte Carlo Casino. This is one of those countries where, which I have to look up on a map because I don't know uh, offhand exactly where it is. But now I've done that and I see it's on the coast of France on the Mediterranean Sea. It's close to Nice, which is a fairly large French city. And if I'm not mistaken, I see the flag right here and it says, well, the flag looks the same as uh, Indonesia, red on the top, white on the bottom. So I think it's the same flag as Indonesia. And in total, they have about 38,000 residents. So it's also known as one of the most expensive and wealthiest countries in the world. But it's the second smallest country. The official language is French, but many residents also speak English and Italian. Another interesting fact here, they say the country has no income tax, so it's a popular destination for wealthy individuals and businesses. So what do you think? Are you interested in visiting Monaco? So the third smallest country is Nauru. Uh, let me just see if I got the pronunciation correct for that one. It's N-A-U-R-U. -U. So I think it's pronounced Nauru. Yeah, it looks like, or, or maybe it's Nauru, Nauru. Sorry about that. So Nauru has a beautiful flag. It's a white, or sorry, it's a uh, blue rectangle with a yellow line in the middle, and a star in the bottom left corner. Now this country is in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it looks like the closest country to Nauru is the Solomon Islands. And for as for a bigger country, it's somewhat close to Papua New Guinea and Fiji. But when you get into uh, a lot of these Pacific Island countries, they're, they're really far apart. And the reality is you can't say that it's necessarily close to anything. It really is surrounded by a lot of ocean. But this country is 21 kilometers squared, so quite a bit larger than Monaco or Vatican City. And it's very isolated, as I said. It's over 3,000 kilometers from the nearest continent, that being Oceania. So Nauru, although it's much bigger than Monaco and Vatican, city. It's uh, the third smallest countries in the world. So some interesting facts about Nauru that I would like to share with you guys is that Nauru is home to some unique bird species including the Nauru reed warbler and the Nauru fruit dove. So if you're one of those people who like bird watching, you might be able to go over to Nauru to see some unique birds. And it's also home to about 12,000 residents. So quite a small population in fact, it's, there's less people in Nauru than there are in Monaco. So that's the third smallest country. 
Uh, but next on the list, the fourth smallest country in the world, is Tuvalu. Tuvalu, or Tuvalu. Sorry about the pronunciation here. I try to do my best, but the, the fact is there's a lot of words in the world that I'm not exactly familiar with, and there's a lot of countries in the world. But let me just look up the pronunciation of this one so I can give you a more informed reading. So it does seem to be Tuvalu. Tuvalu. So this is another Pacific island. So Tuvalu covers an area of just 26 square kilometers. And it's known for its coral atolls are like coral reefs and also stunning beaches rich culture and this culture is influenced by Polynesian traditions so if you just look online at some of the pictures of Tuvalu it is quite beautiful those beaches are just stunning and I'm sure they have quite remarkable snorkeling, scuba diving, and other sorts of water sports. And it has an interesting shape if you look at some of the pictures. It's almost like a very thin line of an island, at least in certain parts but certainly has uh, beautiful scenery and, and culture. And uh, it's very remote. When we say that a country is remote, R-E-M-O-T-E, -E, it means that it's far away from anything else. And... Um, has a small population, just 11,000 people live in Tuvalu. And apparently the country is threatened by rising sea levels. And there's the possibility of its being completely submerged underwater in the future. Which is honestly quite sad. But... And these are the realities we face in the world. So we, so far we have Vatican City, Monaco, Nauru, Tuvalu. And number five on the list for the 10 smallest countries in the world is San Marino. Or San Marino. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing everything today. San Marino. And so where is San Marino? Well, it's a small European country surrounded by Italy and covers an area of just 61 square kilometers. So similar to Vatican City, it's a country that is within Italy, surrounded by the country of Italy. It is known for its medieval architecture, stunning landscapes, and the famous Mount Titano, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So if you look at this country, they have quite a beautiful castle on top of a hill which is just like something out of, a, out of a movie. It kind of reminds me of the second Lord of the Rings movie. Um, the city in Rohan, which was on a hill. I forget what it was called, but it was where King Theoden reigned. It looks like that. And the flag of San Marino is quite beautiful too. It's white on the top, blue on the bottom. 
says li libertas in the middle, which I assume means liberty. So it's a cool flag, cool architecture. But I don't know too much about San Marino. Here are some interesting facts. It's the fifth smallest country in the world and the oldest republic in the world still in existence. Um, it's located entirely within Italy and its official language is Italian. It's known for its medieval architecture, as we said, including the famous three towers. Hmm. Also sounds like Lord of the Rings, you know, the two towers. The country has its own football team, which competes in international matches. Well, good luck to the San Marino Football Club. That's, that's impressive. With such a small population, they compete on the world stage. And it says here, San Marino is one of the few countries in the world that still mints its own coins. Mint, M-I-N-T, it's not the candy. It is uh, the process of making money or coins. Mint it can be a verb. So San Marino mints its own coin, its own coins, sorry. <laughs> San Marino mints its own coins. Don't know why I cannot speak sometimes. The sixth smallest country in the world. This one I'm pretty sure I can pronounce. It's Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. So, it's amazing all these countries exist, eh? So, Liechtenstein is 160 square kilometers. So now we're getting into some rather big territories. You know, um, the first country we talked about was less than one kilometer squared. So this one is 160 square kilometers. Not as small, but still tiny compared to most other countries. And it's a landlocked country in Europe, meaning it uh, borders no ocean. It's entirely surrounded by land. And it is known for its stunning alpine landscapes. Alpine, it means mountains with trees on them. It's also known for quaint villages. So quaint is an interesting adjective. It's Q-U-A-I-N-T, quaint. It's hard to explain what it means, but if you say that a place has quaint villages, it means the villages are small, peaceful, unassuming, and charming. There's also an impressive castle called the, uh, the Vaduz Castle, Liechtenstein. When you look at these towns, in this castle, it looks like something out of the past. It's quite impressive and beautiful. And in fact, I'm jealous of anybody who lives in Liechtenstein. That is a beautiful, beautiful place with mountains, trees, and ancient castles and quaint towns. Um, interestingly, it's one of the world's wealthiest countries with a highly developed economy and a low unemployment rate. I wonder if they mean like relative wealth, meaning that like each person is uh, wealthy, even though there's not a lot of people there. So the GDP is probably not that high, but I'm just guessing on that. The official language is German, but residents also speak English and French. It has a long history of art and culture and is home to many museums and galleries. 
Well, I'm not surprised by that. It looks like a culturally interesting place. So the seventh smallest country in the world is the Marshall Islands. So this small island nation in the Pacific covers an area of just 181 square kilometers. It's made up of 29 coral atolls and is known for its pristine beaches, turquoise waters, and diverse marine life. Do you know that color turquoise? It's kind of a mix between blue and green. It's spelled uh, T-U-R-Q-U-O-I-S-E, turquoise. You know, it's uh, hard to spell a lot of those words with Q-U in them. So the Marshall Islands, it's another Pacific country. So it says here, the country was once under United States administration from the end of World War II until 1986. And then it gained independence. So the U.S. is responsible for the country's defense, provides financial assistance. Okay. It's a popular destination for scuba diving and snorkeling. I'm a big fan of snorkeling. You can see so many different colors um, in those coral reefs. It's very surprisingly colorful. And uh, yeah, I've never tried um, scuba diving though. But yeah, Marshall Islands. Some more facts about the Marshall Islands. The official languages are Marshallese and English. Hmm, Marshallese, I didn't know that was a language. And the country's economy primarily comes from farming, fishing, and production of handicrafts. So I'm sure there's a lot of history around the Marshall Islands, that's quite interesting. Apparently, the United States did some uh, testing of nuclear weapons in the Marshall Islands, which is quite terrifying, I have to say. Kind of scary. But I would love to talk to somebody from the island to... Uh, have them explain what if what it's like, what it's like there. Because, you know, you can read as many facts about these places as you want, but uh, at the end of the day, we would love to learn from people who actually live there. So, let me review. Number one smallest country was Vatican City and then Monaco, Nauru, Tuvalu, San Marino, Liechtenstein, Marshall Islands. Brings us to number eight, the eighth smallest country in the world. He's called St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis, that's N-E-V-I-S. So this Caribbean country... I never knew how to pronounce that. Is, is it Caribbean or Caribbean? I don't know. I guess it's up to you. This Caribbean country covers an area of just 261 square kilometers and is made up of two islands. It is known for its stunning beaches, lush rainforests, and rich history, which is heavily influenced by the colonial period. 
St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm going to look it up to find a picture of the flag. I can describe what the flag looks like. So the flag is green, red, and black with two diagonal lines, yellow lines, and two white stars in the middle. Now, if I had to guess, I would assume those two white stars represent each island, St. Kitts and Nevis. And they do have beautiful rainforests on this island. I'm sure there's incredible ecology to be seen. Some interesting facts about St. Kitts and Nevis is that the country has a population of around 50,000 people. Probably smaller than a lot of your hometowns. The official language is English, but many residents also speak Creole. Creole, or Creole, that's C-R-E, O -L -E. The economy is based on tourism, agriculture, and manufacturing. So if anyone has experience with St. Kitts and Nevis, we would love to hear your feedback. And the ninth smallest country in the world is the Maldives. It's another one of those things where some people say Maldives, some people say Maldives. And I don't know, honestly, which one is technically correct. But this small island nation in the Indian Ocean covers an area of just 300 square kilometers. It is known for its stunning coral reefs, turquoise lagoons, and luxurious resorts, making it a popular destination for honeymooners and travelers seeking a tropical getaway. I remember during the pandemic, I looked into the idea of perhaps moving to the Maldives because they were offering some digital nomad accommodations. But at the end of the day, it was just a little too expensive for me. But... They are known for having amazing beaches and clear water, a lot of marine life as well. So it's also a good place for snorkeling and diving. Um, it is the lowest lying country in the world with an average elevation of just 1.5 meters above sea level. It may be another one of the countries who are sort of endangered when it comes to rising sea levels. And the economy is based on tourism and fishing. Well, no surprises there. Yeah, so shout out to the Maldives, the beautiful country. And the 10th smallest country in the world is called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So this Caribbean country covers an area of just 389 square kilometers and is made up of 32 islands. It's known for its stunning beaches, lush rainforests, and vibrant culture, which is heavily influenced by African, British, and French traditions. Well, I'm sensing a theme. A lot of these countries are small island nations. Nauru, Tuvalu, Marshall Islands, St. Kitts, St. Vincent. There's many small island nations out there. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines is made up of over 30 islands. So, more islands than St. Kitts, which was only two. The official language is English, but many residents also speak Creole. 
And the country, the economy is based on agriculture, particularly the production of bananas and arrowroot. Wow. So which of these 10 smallest countries would you most like to visit? Would you rather visit some of the largest countries in the world or the smallest ones? It's an interesting question. I think I would most like to visit San Marino and Vatican City. That's because my background is Italian, but I've never been to Italy. So I would like to go to Italy and also visit those two small countries. Now, what do you think? So that's the end of English on the Road, episode four, an English podcast for English learners. Thank you for listening. And good luck studying English.